This graph compares the performance of a leading action recognition algorithm on a range of existing datasets. Recognizing actions in real movies and videos is hard because they contain variations in lighting, viewpoint and background clutter. In typical action recognition algorithms, low-level features such as gradients or optical flow are computed. These low-level features are then aggregated together to form a vector descriptor for the whole clip, and typically, high-level features such as pose are not considered because pose estimation is hard. With such an approach, we may wonder how the accuracy of low-level features affects the overall accuracy, whether we should consider features within human masks, and whether high-level pose features will perform better than flow-based features. To address all these questions, here we use annotated data to help understand action recognition algorithms. Specifically, we want to answer what are important algorithm properties and features. Our method involves taking an algorithm and replacing every stage of the algorithm with ground truth data to see what is important. These ground truth data points are more accurate flow, a foreground human mask and the joint positions. Here we choose the state-of-the-art dense trajectories algorithm. To obtain video data, we choose a subset of 21 actions from HMDB51. These actions contain one main person in action. We extended the puppet tool described in Sufi et al. 2012 for video annotation using Amazon's Mechanical Turk tool. Users can choose a particular viewpoint size for the puppet, then drag the joints of the puppet to match the joints of the person. From a single puppet, we obtain the foreground mask and joint positions. From puppets of two adjacent frames, we compute the optical flow using the correspondence of points on the puppet model. This video shows some of our annotations. With these annotations, we are ready to study algorithms and features. First, we run the baseline algorithm dense trajectories. We then replace the optical flow computed on the person with the optical flow generated from the puppet. Here, we show the optical flow used in the baseline for three random frames. We then replace the optical flow with the puppet flow, improving the baseline by 6%. This suggests that having accurate optical flow on the person is important. We then combine these two flows by using puppet flow on the person and the Farnbach's flow on the background. This leads to an improvement over puppet flow alone. We found that the background motion alone was not sufficient for recognition. Therefore, it could be that by doing such a composition, we enhance the motion boundary around the person. Next, we consider the puppet mask. We compute the features on the whole frame, then take only those from the human's bounding box. We also mask the image with a bounding box before computing features. Next, we mask the image with a puppet mask. Finally, we resize the masked images such that the person has unit scale. The last option leads to the largest performance gain over the baseline. Next, we ask whether flow and masks from state-of-the-art algorithms can help with action recognition. We run Bordev's pose look detector and Sun's classic NL flow algorithm. The resulting performance is about the same or even worse than the baseline. We note the classic plus NL outperforms Farnbach's algorithm on a standard optical flow benchmark. This suggests that better flow on standard benchmarks doesn't mean better flow for action recognition. Next, we study the performance of high-level features. Given joint positions, we compute a set of relations between joints. For instance, the distance between every pair of joints, their relative orientation, and the inner angle spanned by triples of joints. The resulting pose features outperform all of the low to mid-level features that we have tried. We conclude that high-level pose features are more reliable than flow-based features. Now, we consider pose estimated from state-of-the-art algorithms. Existing pose estimation algorithms focus on upper body or full body. We focus on the full body and consider a subset of JHMDB that has the full body visible. We also perform the analysis we have described earlier for this subset and observe a similar performance gain over the baseline given ground truth data. We run Yang and Ramanan's pose estimation algorithm and here we show some results. While current pose estimation algorithms are far from perfect, the pose features derived from estimated joints surprisingly outperforms the baseline by 8%. This suggests that the state-of-the-art pose estimation algorithm is already good enough to help with action recognition. In addition to pose features, 
We also consider low-level texture features around the joints, similar to what is done in dense trajectories. We found that adding these texture features does not further improve the performance of pose features. Here we summarise our results. Specifically using ground truth, we find that low and mid-level features lead to roughly 9-11% to gain. The high-level pose is the best feature. It leads to roughly 20% gain over the baseline. The evaluation of state-of-the-art flow and human detection algorithms shows that they cannot help with action recognition. The most interesting discovery is that the pose estimated by the state-of-the-art algorithm already outperforms flow-based features for the full body. Please visit the JHMDB website for our dataset as well as the action recognition and pose estimation challenge.